Coach, we're back here in part two of uh, our interview with you guys. Coach, you've already introduced yourself, so we're going to go right here with the guys. Just give me his name and year. Abdul Alwasso, senior. Simon Bolton Swider, senior. Uh, Brother Hill, senior. Storm Strickland, senior. Alberto Rajiri, senior. Peterson, senior. Coach, now we, on our other part, you know, we mentioned um, brief history of last year. We don't really technically have to go back into that. Uh, let's go a little bit more on this season. Um, give me your mindset heading into this season. How I kind of ask them about their thoughts, their final thoughts in this upcoming season. What's give me t- give me one of your pros and cons in this year? Something you hang your hat on, and some things you know you got to work on uh, as this season approaches. Start with a negative. Uh, we have a lot of guys that haven't started before. You know, a lot of guys that are taking positions that they've played JV and freshman before, but haven't been on the varsity, and that's that's always a challenge. They'll, they'll get baptized in it tomorrow night against James Clemens. Um, but on the positive side, these are they've been successful at the other levels, and we um, we also have a situation where I think that we're we're poised to be good again this year. And it's up to coaches, staff, and the players to make sure that we all do our jobs. And if we do our jobs, we're going to be successful. And again, strongly, our goal is to win a state championship. And if we don't have that goal, we probably need to find something else to do. Hundred percent. All you guys were on last year's team. No, I was. You guys was okay. Three you guys. All right. So let's let's start in on this. I'm going to ask you guys to recap last year, but let's go ahead and talk about this year. What's your expectations personally coming into this? So I think we got to go on the mindset of that. If we don't win state, then I mean, what else are we playing for? And we've all played for many years, so I think we have a good shot. Yeah, I hope we win a lot of games. Uh, against big schools and yeah that we have had a great season and also fun uh yeah i hope that we're gonna have a great season i know we got the talent for it so we just got to go out and prove it uh i also think we just have a lot of talent here we all have a very good work ethic and work ethic towards everything that we do and i just hope that we have a successful season i just hope that we win many games if we do good and we had to improve ourselves. Absolutely, is it? Yes, sir. Looking forward to seeing what all this season has to offer us. And I'm really seeing that we have a good chance of winning a lot of games this season. Just progressing a lot. I got a question for each one of you guys. Uh, how competitive does it get at practice with you guys? I think it's pretty competitive. We, we go at it pretty hard at practice. No doubt. Same question for you. I mean, yeah, we, we have a pretty hard special event. Yeah, really? <laughs> See a bulldog coach. That practice describes some of these practices. How intense are they? We're all full speed, high intensity, always trying to make ourselves better. Playing like it's a game, always trying to improve. And that's right. That's awesome. Yeah, we don't slack off a lot. We try, we get our um we get our drills, we do them and we ask for advice if we need it and we just keep going until we get better at it. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not stupid, like, for example, to learn the other game, and we're not going to uh, slide each other down, but it is, it is competitive for you. It's, it's really Morgan Alex, and then, especially Drew right there, and we throw Kowalan back for what? <laughs> That's awesome. So this is, this is your, this is your headhunter coach? Drew is a very physical player, and, and, uh, and, and that's a very positive attribute of Drew. He's very physical. Not dirty by any means, uh, but physical. Yeah, he, he understands two uh, two speeds, 101 percent, 90 percent. He leads most runs. We run two miles a day, minimal. Even today, uh, you know, they run two miles. We have game tomorrow. We won't run tomorrow before the end. But the muscle memory is every day. Ashland and I, and it that's a warm up for a soccer player. Yeah. And so we 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 do that. But Drew is is uh, very much a uh, hard worker, 100% physical. Let's go down the list like you do with the others. Yeah, Alberto is from uh, Italy. And if I get your cut, you're on, you'll forgive me. Uh, he is really fast, and he, uh, we, we, we wear tracker software. I know that's overkill, but if we wear trackers and we have a camera that tracks their top speed, how, much, how many miles they run during a game, all that good stuff, and we've had two scrimmages and we uh, against ourselves and against our junior varsity. We had uh, the referee training a couple of weeks ago, 
And uh, I think he hit, what was it, 11.1 miles an hour, 12 miles an hour, something like that. Mm-hmm. And very fast, very quick, and can play. And he's multi-positional. He can play. It was kind of a – we got lost in uh, substituting the other day, and he's primarily a defender, and we just put him up front. And he come off the game and said, Coach, I want to start working up front. Mm. He really enjoyed it. And so he, he does a good job. Glad to have him on the team. Um, Storm joined us last year. He, he came on to the team. I, we found Storm in 9v9 because a lot of these guys play in the fall in this local 9v9 league. I don't coach. That's not allowed. But Storm was on another team, and they were like, if he goes to Southside, coach, you've got to talk to him. So I let him come to me, uh, and he came to me and said, hey, I'd like to be on the soccer team. And he played JV last year because our roster had already been set. And this year's his first year on varsity, and I'm, I'm expecting him to do good things really fast. Finishes really well, really strong. Gets up in the air good. So we're, we're excited about Storm. This is Brom. Brom, in many ways, um, similar to Alberto. He's not really multiple zi- multiple positional other than on the backside. But he went in in referee training, and, and his stock went up 70%. I'm not kidding, because at practice, he tries hard, but it's hard to tell when you're playing against yourself. And we ended up playing against, I think it was Scottsboro and Arab. He had really good games. And I told him to come off the field. I said, son, you want to get to wear a tracker because it's not, there's no humiliation to it, but we have 22 of the roster and 19 or 17, something like that, trackers. So three of those have to be rotated. He got his own. He has his own. Yeah, because he's going to be on the field. And that's a good sign. Simon is a starter. Uh, Abram is from the Netherlands, by the way. Uh, the, uh, and Simon is from Switzerland. Uh, kind of cheesy, but other than that, hey, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um... <laughs> A lot of old in that joke, but anyway, um, <laughs> so, yes. Simon's a really strong uh, forward and midfielder, and we're he's got to start this year without a doubt, and so we're pumped about that. He um, brings an added dimension to it from the left side, um, and and that's pretty much it. So he's a fine young man. Also, I, I teach several of these guys as well. And Abdullah, what can we say about Abdullah? I've coached Abdullah every year I've been here except my first year. And uh, he, um, outstanding young man. He also kicks for the football team. He, um, strong foot, really strong foot, and also quick up top. Uh, you don't want him in midfield. I'm kidding. He's like that. It, because he, he's pretty physical as well. No, I actually, that he plays midfield really well. But he's an excellent striker, uh, excellent wing, and uh, plays the uh, nine and the seven as well. So I'm, uh, I'm excited about what I'm doing. He was injured most of the year last year. As was Hayden in the previous group was was injured a lot, so we're gonna and you know he with his arm in a sling scored how many at the Gaston State to three last year at Gaston City five goals in Gaston City last year with his arm in a sling man and then he got a shot and the doctor said he couldn't play for another month mm. but uh, but so we're really excited about what Abdul is going to be doing as well and so these guys speak really well English though I mean it's been really good English. <laughs> um, but Ballet Ballet Drew, we've been working on it. It's all, it, all these guys do. But coach, which, when you have these different types of every every country has its own style, it's like America basketball, you know, and Cranton, you know. But when you have these different styles, how do you blend those to play school school soccer? That's a great question, and it. I think by shifting to the four three three this year, we ran a four four two last year, which is more of an American style. We went to a four three three this year, not because of them coming, but because we did it against uh, a couple of teams last year and we were successful with it, but didn't have time to fully implement it. Most of the European teams run a version of the 4-3-3. That's helped. Um, our backs know exactly what's expected, and we play exactly like we do in Europe with overlapping runs and things of that nature. So this year, believe it or not, the, the, there's been very little stylistic difference. Last couple of years there have been, uh, you know, because a lot, of the, a lot of the countries in Europe are about to dribble a little bit more. Our others want to play a lot of direct... I don't want to say boom ball, but a lot of direct ball, uh, Premier League style. But most of these guys fit into our style perfectly, which is a possession-based style that we do we do play direct when possible. But for the most part, we try to build from the back and work our way up and then overlap from the outsides. I like it. I'm um, start right here with you. Different styles in your own words, you know, being from somewhere else. How has that been for you, Flat? Where you used to play to, like, America style? Uh it is pretty here more it's more physical. It was more tough to go in into it. Um 
yeah, it does more of the mess maybe in Italy, but I still like it. Okay. I still visit it in the like, start. Who else? Uh, it's a little bit of getting used to, because I was used to playing way more physical instead of him. Like, I was used to trying to body everybody off the ball, but that didn't really work. So I had to get used to that, and that has happened more since now, and I'm trying to get trying to quit that a little bit. But I've always played 4 3 3 my entire life, so that wasn't that big of a transition. I've always played that. Um, in Europe, we have club soccer and not uh, high school soccer. So I would say it's a little bit more technical. Um, but there is more heart here, I think, because it is a school that you represent. And I think that makes everything more more intense. It makes sense. So the rest of you guys have been on the team since right. since day one. How has it been having these guys play with you with the different styles? Yeah. It's, it's been interesting to see how they play. Uh, all of them play differently. And, uh, they're all great players. Really enjoy watching them play and having them all the because they're really helpful. They help the team out a lot. And it's just a joy to have them to play next to. I tell you, for different play styles, it actually makes us improve even more because it prepares us for other play styles mm. coming into the season. I, I mean, you have more physical, you have less physical, you have all kinds of different uh, physicalities and techniques and stuff like that that you learn off of people like our friends here that come to our school and they help us learn and they own and grow doing it. That's awesome. I enjoy having all three of them on the team. And I grew up watching like European soccer, like the big team, so... It's kind of nice to see them coming here and actually experience playing with them. Life. Coach, how do you get chemistry on guys that didn't grow up around each other? Where you, you know, you may see a, a Oak Mountain or a West Dave or someone who these guys play club ball, they played school ball, they grew up in the same neighborhood. How, how do you, how do you form that in just a year or two? School, they hang out in the halls, they we eat at the bar and El Tap and Mikasita. They 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 hang out together. That that's a huge team building is more than just what goes on on the pitch, and in the locker room. Uh, I, I guarantee you, half these guys have been together one way or another in the last two or three days outside of soccer. Once you do that, you you know the person's personality and personality, playing style are one and the same, and um, and that's that that's key. I mean, that we don't. You go to your house, you go to your house, and we don't talk to each other anymore. No, these guys know each other. They, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not how you meet people, it's how you treat people, and they treat each other well. Uh, we, we don't have, you know, a lot of coaches in some schools not around here uh, would could worry about hazing and think, I don't worry about this. These guys think too much of each other, and they think, and they mentor the younger players. That's important. I've got a son on this team, you know, a younger, uh, a 10th grader, and I don't have any worries when he's with one of these guys because it's, it's about mentorship and brotherhood. Uh, I think, you know, I've said before, family may be overused, but at the same time, I love the mentorship and the leadership these older guys have, but it, it shows. and it, it's, it makes my job 100% easier. My problems are off the field, and it would drag and fly and making sure the veils lined off. We got great parents at that point, all that, by the way. But, um, but these young men are up above and beyond, uh, and I've had the privilege since I've been here at Southside. Uh, you know, I've got several. I got two coaching for me right now that I've coached here, and so you know, we've had guys move on and play college, and they come back and watch the practices, and so it's it's been really neat, and uh, I I really enjoy it. Okay, I'm gonna ask you guys this question: What do you do to get ready for a game? I didn't ask the other guys. I'm gonna ask you guys: Like, you listen to music, you relax, and you get what do you, what do you do personally? Uh, personally, uh, well, just kind of. Focus on the game, focus on who we're going to be playing, thinking about uh, staying healthy, eating good before the game, and then, like, staying hydrated and lose stretching a lot and just making sure that the mindset is towards the game and doing everything I can to help my team in the game. I'm always pretty nervous before every game. Um, I either try to just talk to myself in my head or just be relaxed. I like it. And then as you Honestly, I overthink every guy for a reason. <laughs> for a reason of if I overthink it, then I'm more prepared for everything that could happen. Hmm. Because I, everybody thinks overthinking stuff is a bad thing. Sometimes it can be a good thing because you're prepared. Yeah. 
So I use my own head to help me prepare for a game. Mm -hmm. uh, the day before, I just try to eat right, drink right, and honestly, not think too much about it. Just come on the pitch and do whatever, do the best I can and make sure that we win. <laughs> That's okay. kind of it. No doubt. Yeah, enough sleep is important. Uh, the right food. And yeah, I also, I also listen to music in the morning before a game. Um, yeah. I think hydration, not just the day before, but prepare from other times and stretching a lot. I stretch a lot. But I think it's important to be close to your teammates the like day before and then get out there and do Coach, you go live tomorrow. Give me some thoughts. Give me your final thought. I'm excited. I'm sure I'll have leg cramps tonight. Probably won't have them tomorrow night, but, you know, I, I'll, I'll let it wait. Um, it's it's kind of what Storm says. I tried, but I've tried not to overthink it the night before because at this point, they're either ready or they're not. Where they're going to uh, succeed or are going to try really hard. You know, I'm, I have no doubt about this. These guys are not going to be out there and lay down. If we get beat, it'll be by a better team, not by better individuals. And um, and and that's my job to fix when that happens. Um, and I'm probably going to watch about three episodes of The Rifleman tonight. <laughs> that's all. Awesome. Just uh, chill out. And I think that, you know, you have to do that. You have to. I know a lot of the um, colleges in other sports take the guys, even though they're on campus playing home, they'll go to a hotel and you know, go play ping pong and go bowling and stuff like that. Um, you know, there's something to be said for that. Um, and, but again, we, it, it is what it is. We're pumped. We're excited. I, I can't say, I, I promised the guy I wouldn't mention his name, but I've got a parent that's done a tremendous amount of work in this locker room. And again, I won't mention his name, but I promised him I wouldn't. We've got parents that have stepped up and did all this wonderful stuff. Got the field looking beautiful. Girls and boys' parents. Um, so that kind of thing, I don't have to worry about. I do worry about it because that's just who I am. But they handle the the details for me, and they don't know how much that means. I mean, it really is that. Like I say, I've, I've coached for 36 years and never had a soccer specific locker room like this one. That's all, Cindy. And you know, at the same time, we're just we're more than blessed. And in the end, if it if we fight a good fight and we don't win, we we can go home and get ready for the next bite. There's no doubt. We got a big tournament this weekend. Uh, you know, up at Sand Mountain, and. Um, and and that's just it, you know. It's um, we got a lot of seniors on this team. We had a lot of seniors last year. The um, I'm not even nervous about that because RJV and and freshman teams are killing it. These guys are used to doing what they're supposed. They they believe in winning, and they know what it feels like to win. The hardest, and I've told some of the young coaches, you know, that are starting programs. There's some great uh, schools that have just started soccer programs like Houston Christian. Had a great talk with Scott today. Don't sweat the details. Just find people that you're competitive with. Don't worry about the ones you can win. And because the kids will have fun just being out there. But but these groups, they all know how to win. And um, that's pretty much what I, you know, I hope. I hope that rings true to each and every person on our roster at every level. I know my coaches do. Daniel Doster is on the very first team that, that – Played here at Southside. He's a varsity assistant. Also, the uh, head JV coach for Tyler Hostetler, who played, was all everything year when he played. Um, Spencer Bernard, who played for me, who's him and Ethan Holsanger, who also played for me. They're the freshman coaches and do a phenomenal job with it. They know how to win. You got to create that culture. And I haven't created that culture. This community has created that culture. I've just been the beneficiary of not having to remold everything. I don't want to be that coach that comes in, tears everything down that exists, and tries to build it in my image or what I want. I think this community has done a great job of teaching these young men the importance of winning. And I think you see it in a lot of our other sports here, and the ones that aren't succeeding are doing a heck of a job trying. And I think that's important. And, um, again, it's just I, I've overset this. It's a blessing to be here. I wake up every morning thinking, and I tell all my kids, don't ever take a job for the money. Take a job that you're going to love. I don't feel like I'm going to work in the morning. Most mornings. That's some mornings you do. <laughs> and I love it. Yeah. All right, Coach. Well, I'm going to shut this video down. I appreciate you guys sitting in with us, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you for what y'all did.